talked about this. You can't make people watch movies. Did you even knock? It was open. It's not in English. Can Jonathan even read? He likes bright objects. It's a very well lit film. And a DVD? What is this? 2002? Sam, I appreciate your concern, but I know them better than you. They live sheltered lives. They have to get by on supermarket bagels, deep south pizza, and Blumhouse film. I didn't know. Christian's movie shelves committed suicide from the boredom. They need this movie. They might not know it, but they're on a new trajectory now. And it's not just them. Everyone who follows in their footsteps and takes a chance on a movie that Netflix or Amazon Prime didn't suggest, movies that the big studios didn't siphon through test audience notes and focus group cards. This is a new horizon for those who are brave enough. Help me to take them there. A goddamn man. You crazy bastard, I'm in. Hello and welcome back to Visited by Voices, not quite live. I'm joined today by my co-host, Sam. Are you ready? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. Also joined from Dan. Hello. Piz. Hola, como esta? Mike. Hey, what's up? Jamie. Bonjour. Jay. Hello. And other... <laughs> <laughs> they ran out of ways to say hello by the time it got to It was going to get rough. We, there's a few more who may join us or may not, or I might just edit that out if it doesn't happen. Uh, but we're here today to talk about a film that's not getting any real exposure in the States. And it's a shame, I think, because it's rare that a film comes out that's as fun and ambitious and wild and definitely deserves eyes as Zombie Ready. It's uh, the new film from Prasanth Varma, and Christian has joined us. Good evening, sir. How y'all doing? Sorry I'm late. <laughs> That's okay. It's Louisiana time. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all of you have seen Zombie Ready, correct? Yeah. Yep. I was supposed to do that? <laughs> I, I expected that response. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> It, the film is available on the AHA streaming service, which is a streaming service that specializes in Indian entertainment. And I know that sounds like something you probably wouldn't be naturally inclined to join, but there is a lot of genre content. And hopefully we can uh, entice you enough, at least with this movie, to get you to take a chance on a whole different world of cinema. Hollywood, Hollywood is not the only place making movies. And either is Bollywood, incidentally. The film we watched separately but together is not a Bollywood film. It comes from a different part of the country that speaks a different language, Telugu. And uh, there are now three major film centers in India. They produce more feature films every year than America does. They have a better distribution network worldwide than America now has. And honestly, if you want to see the future of what the industry looks like, pretty much look to India right now. They're really ruling the roosts on several genres, and they've made great great leaps and bounds in the horror genre. So I want to go around the room and just get some impressions from people on what your first view of uh, Zombie Ready was like. Start with Dan. Absolutely. Uh, so just the fact that I saw Indian zombie movie, that alone sells me right now at a time when you know, Mortal Kombat and Justice League are the biggest movies to people. I, I was much more excited when I heard about this. Uh, it As you kind of said, uh, uh, Telugu, it's the first zombie film from them, but it's not the first Indian zombie film. Uh, there is the Tamil film, Maruthan, and uh, Go Goa Gone, I believe, from 2013. Uh, but uh, when I watched this... I think it really has the potential to cross over to other audiences, uh, particularly here in America, because even though the culture is very different, 
you still see yourself in the characters, much like Shaun of the Dead was a uniquely British movie. You can still uh, connect with the slacker geeks that were in that movie, uh, much as you would uh, really enjoy uh, the lead Mario in this and his friends. Uh, I absolutely love it. Uh, I could see maybe some audiences, the first half is, the first half or so is zombie light. So I hope they don't, that's the only thing that scares me that there's going to be people that are going to be, oh, well, there's not enough zombie action. But boy, does that come if you're patient. <laughs> and I love the characters. This is funny. This is goofy. But I also, surprisingly enough, connected with the characters. And uh, yeah, loved it. Awesome. Piz, what did you think? Um, I thought the first hour was an absolute slog. I barely made it through. Um, really didn't connect with any of the characters. The humor didn't land with me at all. Um, then when it turned into a zombie flick, I was like, eh, it's Shaun of the Dead again. The last half hour was better, but um, I don't know, not for me. Okay. Mike? Uh, well, so far, uh, what everybody said, I, I felt kind of the same thing, too. I felt the pacing was a little off and could have been tighter. It seemed a bit long for the subject matter. Like maybe they could have trimmed a bit here and there to kind of quicken the pace a little bit. Maybe that's just my stupid American brain wanting to get to the point. Uh, but I did enjoy the humor. It did land with me. I did enjoy the characters. Uh, it, I did see a lot of Shaun of the Dead in the film. To me, it was almost like a cross between Romeo and Juliet and Shaun of the Dead with some Benny Hill, Three Stooges type humor thrown in, which I appreciate because I like both Benny Hill and Three Stooges. Uh, weird to see all of that in a zombie flick, uh, but I don't know, being kind of bored with what we're served up over here, it was refreshing and uh, to, to, just to see how they approach certain topics that you probably can't approach in American film. Uh, I don't want to go too far into it, but uh, I did appreciate some of the social and political commentary of what's going on in their country. And I wish there were filmmakers that were brave enough to do that in our country, but I think we know why they may not be brave enough to do it. And I can't say that I really blame them, but uh, aside, aside from being a little long and maybe the pacing could have been tightened up a bit. I really, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, I thought it was great. I and mean, I've really never seen too many films from India. There's a lot of things I, I, I want to say, but then I don't want to say because I'm not there. I'm here. Uh, you, you know what I mean? It's like, there's a line that I, I don't feel comfortable crossing just because I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I, I don't want to go there because I don't want to listen to it, you know, but there are things that they did that we can't do. Uh, and I appreciated that. And it was kind of refreshing, kind of reminded me of like the old America where you could kind of say whatever the fuck you wanted to say and who gave a shit what people thought about it. I kind of appreciated that attitude and uh, I enjoyed it. Are, are you talking about parodying a certain uh, flu like virus? Is that what you're talking about? It could be. It, 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 it could be. Yeah. And uh, well, I, I, we'll get it. Yeah. We'll get it. We'll get into it. But the movie does open with. Wait a, a minute. Does, does, did the world? Did the World Health Organization approve this film? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't world, think so. World I Health Organization is blissfully ignorant of this film. Um, yeah, the film does open with a song, which is strangely pro coronavirus, but still in my head yes. for three like weeks it. now. I loved it. The final Jamie. song is still in my head. Um, I loved it. I was in, I was entertained. I, it, it did have some slow pacing at the beginning, but I didn't mind that so much because I felt like it was giving me a chance to, um, get to know the characters, get to understand the relationships between them. Um, I thought it was super colorful. I really, really liked that. I like a lot of color and a lot of brightness in the movies, um, that I watch and that one has it for sure. The music is incredible. All of the music throughout the whole thing. Um, it big time reminds me of Shaun of the Dead, just like everybody else. It, it did give me a lot of Shaun of the Dead vibes. But I like that because for me, Shaun of the Dead's one of my only zombie movies that I actually really like. 
which I don't like the zombie genre, but this one is different because um, it's it's cheeky, it's funny, it's got um, lots of color, lots of exciting uh, fight scenes. I really love the bullet time, the Matrix kind of thing going on in it. Um, the dancing is good. The, the like I said, the music is good. I think it's a I think it's an A plus movie. I liked it a lot. Jay, sir. Um, I I definitely enjoy the film quite a bit. I've seen it. This is probably my fifth time to watch it. Um, just I had it like going around when I was you know doing chores and stuff. So I've I've seen parts of it quite a few times, but I do kind of agree that um, the pacing maybe just maybe just cut a little bit of that out. I understand they're trying to build the characters, and I appreciate that and everything, but. Um, maybe just cut maybe 15 minutes out of that first hour because I was looking, uh, you know, earlier when I, when I was watching it again, that the, the action really starts at, at like the hour mark. And then it, it's pretty much nonstop until the end of the movie at that point. But, you know, yeah, definitely like mainstream audiences are not going to be cool with that first hour, but I am. But, um, and it's funny, everybody mentioned Shaun of the Dead. I didn't, I didn't think about that one time that one of you guys mentioned that. Because I've I've seen so many you know zombie comedies that it just didn't really occur to me that, that this is you know Shaun of the Dead. But I can I can kind of see it now that you guys mentioned it though. And Stone. Yeah, uh, sorry for being late. First of all, but uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I I especially loved the music. I thought the music was very original, uh, very timely. It goes along with all the themes of the movie, which I very much enjoyed. Uh, the comedy I found uh, very original. I mean, it's one of those movies that I feel like depends a little too much on pop culture references to deliver, you know, easy jokes and easy gags. But uh, and it is lengthy. I mean, th there were several times that I just, you know, I had to take a break from reading all the subtitles, even though I'm almost fully committed to reading subtitles pretty much all the time. But you know, especially when they go by a tad too fast. But, you know, I still, I thought it was a wild ride from beginning to end. I mean, I love the opening song, love the ending song. So much that even, you know, I started dancing to the opening song. Wow. That's how much I enjoyed. We need that on tape. Yeah, I want yeah. to see that. I love TikTok. Uh, <laughs> Patreon exclusive. If we play Patreon the song exclusive. right now. Uh, <laughs> Lauren, I got to ask you, because I, 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 believe uh we had talked about this that oh, one of the opening scenes with the guy thinking that corona beer was going to be handed out there was some truth to that was there not because i thought that was hilarious um well so i want sam's take on it but i'll just say this that there's a lot of jokes that probably are a little bit dense um mm -hmm. there's a couple layers of that we don't recognize because we're not living in that culture. Yeah. Uh, when when uh, Prime Minister Modi is on the television, he's speaking Hindu, and of course the people in the film speak Telugu. So the the whole point is he's giving this an, an intense address to people who don't understand him. So the for very first joke in the film is about how the government just doesn't get it and is screwing up the response. But of course, we miss that as Americans because we just go, "Oh, it's all foreign language. It's all well, subtitled." That's that's something I was going to mention. I, I'm guessing a lot of the jokes are probably lost in translation there. Some yeah. of them, I, I think this was a little bit more. I've seen a decent amount of Indian cinema, and this this is much more Western than most. Um, but I really want Sam's take on this. Do you really? Uh, probably not, but I'm saying I do. Okay. <laughs> I liked it. I had fun with it. Uh, you know, I do agree that the first hour is a little slow, not enough zombies. And my husband was watching it with me and he was like, when, when are the zombies coming? I was just like, they're building it up. It's fine. Relax. So uh, what I did like, I, I really liked the relationship building between the characters, especially because uh, Mario and also later on Kasi Reddy, uh, they actually look like a couple of my friends. So I had no problem with that. I was just like, oh yeah, that's, you know, oh look, it's Alan. Oh look, it's Nick. They're never going to see this. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was kind of like a combination of Shaun of the Dead, Zombieland, with a little bit of the hangover in it. You know, and uh, some of the comedy I think is going to be easily relatable for a lot of Westerners, but um, they may have some issues like uh, getting the jokes between 
uh, relating to Hindi and Telugu. That's probably okay. going to be the biggest thing because not everybody understands the caste system and hell, I barely understand it uh, since I don't watch a lot of Indian cinema. And I mean, they still have like the caste system legally is not enforced. And that's been in, in I don't think it's been enforced since the 50s, but societally it's still recognized. So that's probably going to be maybe the thing that's holding a lot of people back from seeing this. Like, why is everybody's last name ready? <laughs> Just Google it. Just Google it. Do your research. You don't need every. You don't need yeah. us to hold your hand. Uh, I am gonna say at the very be like we have to give props. Can uh, you know if you're gonna if you're gonna start off with uh, something like a you know a good plot point. COVID vaccine turning into zombies. <laughs> but to be fair, to be fair, these are failed vaccines. Failed vaccines. So I guess, you know, that's a good way to get around that. Yeah, it's like they can't really get in trouble with the who. They skipped the animal testing part and went straight to human trials. Yeah. Well, that's that, what you that, did, that right? didn't really happen, though. <laughs> no, no. No, no. The uh, mad scientist is not supposed to be Dr. Fauci at all. I he looked like Dr. Satan. No, of course not. I, I would have, I, you, I, you thought that? Really? I didn't see that. I didn't think that. <laughs> this was shut down, I believe, like 13 days into production. So certain things, uh, I can't even remember how big a thing he was at that point, but uh, in India especially. But, uh, uh, but there is a lot. I, I mean, they combined... Telugu cinema, there's a lot of faction rivalry films, so they kind of combined the zombie element uh, into that. And I, I kind of like that it wasn't just uh, an American knockoff. I, I like the different culture, but uh, you do have to do, you do have to kind of understand the culture a little bit in, in certain portions of this film. Um, like you said, ready. Uh, I think some people just took it as zombie ready, uh, like ready for action sort of deal. But uh, uh, I think there's hope with this one. Will it become Shaun of the Dead level popularity? No, because uh, I don't think it's got the distribution for that. But uh, I don't know. I have faith in this one. We'll see in a few years. I really, really like the characters in this film, like uh, especially our core group, you know, Mario, uh, Maggie, uh, Kalyan, uh, and Baran. Those four characters are just, to me, it's like they spent time to make characters. Even the minor characters are actually developed more than they probably would have gotten in America. The red shirts actually have, have all identifiable, like, attributes. And uh, Nandini, the, uh, the girl who's not exactly what she seems, I think is an amazing character. Um, because it kind of turns the whole, again, cast system on its head. And I think it's just very cool. Did any of you have favorite characters? Even if you don't know their names, because that's cool. I get it. I'm going to go with Cassie Reddy. He was my favorite. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I like the guy that was going to get getting married. I liked him a lot. And I liked the uh, the girl that was always on her phone. Yeah. 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 Maggie, Maggie is yeah. amazing. She's my favorite. Yeah. That was the most American thing about the film, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I really be... like Nandine Anandi. Uh, hopefully I'm saying her name yeah. right. Uh, beautiful. Sorry, none of those <laughs> <are>. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stone, any favorite characters? Oh, was the I had a question. Was the lab guy, was he intentionally supposed to look like Gandhi? I think so, actually, because I noticed I was that... Thinking... <laughs> I was thinking that the whole time. Wait a minute. <laughs> I think he was. <laughs> okay, he's my favorite. There's, there's a, there's, <laughs> well, a statue of Gandhi is also in the movie to, just to, to yeah. blur yeah. the edges. I really appreciated the ear tufts coming out. <laughs> yeah. Like directly out of his ears. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody uh, laugh at the denture scene? Because I thought that was just yes. hilarious. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, they set all that stuff up, so you, you know yeah. it's coming. <laughs> They're in the, the crazy, treadmill. The crazy aunt. So, so, I I loved her. She was funny. We got to get. We got to talk about the treadmill in a second. But Christian, your thoughts on the film? I'm just so shocked that you invited people on here that don't even like it. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a discussion, man. I, I, this channel, if nothing else, is always about like unpopular opinions. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I liked it. I, I quite frankly, I, I think I liked the first hour more than the second half. I thought I thought the comedy was was funny. Like when the mm -hmm. when the dad opens the door and all the reporters are out there and they're praising the yeah. daughter, yeah. and then the dad's like, "Hey, well, is this your son right here? That's not my son." I laughed my ass off. I thought that, I thought that was great. I mean. I thought the first half was the funniest part. I loved the the humor. So, I thought the the editing was the best part of that film. I thought that's where the humor really lied. It was like in the editing of that film. It was just so. It, it reminded me of of like '90s television, like comedy stuff. I loved it. I thought, I thought that was the strongest part of the movie. I think that was the most annoying part for me. It was like they edited that thing in a blender. Everything was like a zoom, 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 and like all oh, these sound effects. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. It's, it's I ate it up. I ate it up. I, I don't need everything to be like John Carpenter. I, when I want no. John Carpenter, I'll take it. But I thought that was great. I thought the editing was, was hilarious. I thought I it fit the style. Yeah, it, it definitely has a like video game, manja, yeah. anime type feel to a lot of it. And it's all elevated, right? It's all like kind of exaggerated to a level. That's why I think that scene of uh, Mario just walking down the street and he and it becomes a video game. Walking to work is a video game to him. Mm -hmm. That that allows the final fight, the big fight scene in the uh, the um, the Shiva fair, to be a big video game too. Like the, everything's mirrored in the film. Um, that's why I think even though the first half might be a, a I, something we're unaccustomed to, to allow something to develop, um, it all pays off. Like. There's not a wasted scene. It's just, it's not that American, like, get to the point. It's not nobody where it's like you have to have the big, you know, bus fight scene in the first half hour or else there's a problem with the movie. Yeah. I, I thought the editing was uh, just, we, we the story was from, from my perspective anyway, was from Mario's point of view, the way he saw his own culture and his life. And the way he just his attitude toward everything around him, where he kind of lived in his own little bubble in his mind, where he was a game programmer and everything else was secondary. So he kind of lived in that own reality of his brain and that editing style and everything that went on was just how he saw things. We were like seeing from his point of view, where he was kind of ADHD and you know, he was more worried about uh, the bug on his video game than he, than he was anything else that was going on. You know, all these traditions and this and that and the other thing are all, you know, who cares? This is what's important. And, you know, the conflict with his dad is just timeless. I mean, that's a generational rift that yeah. I think would play to any audience. I mean, he wants his son to be somebody important, like a doctor or a lawyer, and he wants to make video games. And the, and the, the breakfast scene was, was freaking hilarious when, like, his dad's, like, looking at him like he doesn't even deserve to be eating the food. Best character. And, Best it, character. It, That's it, my favorite character, 100%. It, you know, and his dad just watching him, and, and he's like, Watching his dad, he like takes a bite, and his dad just look keeps looking at him. That whole <laughs> that, that he denies him to the what, reporters. That's not yeah, my and son. Then he, like, he, he did, and then the, then the daughter's like, "Well, it's all because of my brother because he designed a program that helped me study and made it fun." His dad's like, "What?" <laughs> so yeah, I enjoyed the first hour. I like the kind. It could have been a little tighter though. It, it was a little, yeah. You know, I don't know how long was what was the runtime on that? It was at least two, two hours, hours, wasn't it? Five minutes. Two hours. It could have been 150, 145. Well, again, culturally, that's that. short. For, that is a short for an Indian film. So, I mean, that's just something that's going to be different for us, right? Um, well, not really. I mean, look at uh, like the Godzilla films and some of the films we have to sit through. They're two hours plus. <laughs> the just with the Justice League new cut is four hours. I mean, you know, after a while, the, those long films you just. It's like you you can get to the point, tighten up your story, get the pacing going a little better, and and the and the audience will be with you a little more. Uh, now, I didn't really feel like it was too long, but I did feel like the pacing could have been sped up in a couple of, of places. But uh, hey, overall, I enjoyed the first hour as much as the second hour uh, for different reasons. Because Mario has a nice little arc where he learns that sure what he does is important, but everything going on around him is of equal importance if not to him to everybody else and that's why it should be important to him you know so i, I, I like that i thought it was cool my husband and i laughed a lot i really i really didn't even think about the pacing to be honest in the beginning i mean yeah i, I see now how it can be considered slow but 
I, I honestly wasn't even thinking about the pacing at all. I was just like waiting, you know, uh, for the next joke or it was, it was hard for me too. Cause I don't watch a lot of foreign movies and reading subtitles for me was, was a new thing. But I, once I started, I realized afterwards that I had been reading the subtitles, but still able to look at the picture pretty well. So I thought it worked out pretty well. Um, I like the commentary too on the old fashioned uh, dad who doesn't accept the new ways of, you know, living the alternative lifestyle that, that is going on right now. Because I myself even have had trouble understanding like, you know, my son's uh, relationships online and stuff like that. And it, it took me a long time to adjust to that. So I can sort of understand that, you know, the parent being a little upset about that. But at the same time, I thought it was great that the whole thing just proves him absolutely wrong. <laughs> so Yeah, he, he turns out to be not quite the honorable stand-up guy he expects his son to be. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I, I like that, that, that too. That was cool. Yes. And the fighting style is so good. I I just really love and the and the cinematography when they're doing the fights, like the top down stuff. And I, I just I really I really enjoyed it. I really did. Yeah, the way it was directed, it kind of reminded me of uh, Mick G's uh, when he directed uh, the Babysitter Killer Queen. Just kind of breaking the fourth wall a little bit, not really giving a fuck, and just making it kind of out there. I no. never want to be reminded of a McG movie when I'm watching any movie. <laughs> never. I, never. I understand that. I understand. I, trust me. I know. Your life, <laughs> huh? uh, oh, I know that a lot of people mentioned Shaun of the Dead as being an inspiration for this. I'll be perfectly honest. The movie I thought of was Scott Pilgrim versus the World for some reason. Yeah. Yes, I thought of that one too. Yes. Yes. Screaming at me from from like. From 2011, when that came out, I got to return and watch that again. But yeah, th that's the movie that was screaming in my ear, like as far as inspiration is concerned. I'll take your word for it. I've never seen it, so I don't know. It's nobody's perfect. gonna, nobody's gonna guess what I thought of. I mean, nobody would, nobody would think. To me, it was even Stevens. He's the silly young kid. He's got the smart mm -hmm. sister. The dad gives him hell. It, it was like an even Stevens, for God's sake. Oh, I feel old. He's Shia yeah. LaBeouf. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Shia LaBeouf. Oh, I wanted more. I wanted, I'd watch a sitcom on that family. To hell with the zombies. I, you know, that family was my favorite part of it. I love that dad. Now, if Shia LaBeouf was in this movie on like a four-day meth bender, I'd loved it. It would have been great. It would have been great. Well, they did have that drunk character. Oh, that character is amazing. He doesn't have a name in the, in the end credits either. Uh, he, that was a nice bit of comic relief there. It, he just keeps getting in the wrong vehicle drunk. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as you can tell, he makes it out alive. So, um, that I want to talk. Uh, so we're going to get into not really spoilers, but there's no way to discuss the film without at least talking a little bit textually about what happens in the film. I want to talk about that big fight scene. Is there a more epic moment on in cinema history than when Mario steps out from behind Nandini and and then all the friends and just the random henchmen that that's along for the ride just step out and they're all holding their individual weapon? Well, it's that scene. But it, is there a more epic moment? I mean, I, I in the theater when I saw it, like there was an audible gasp from the like the row behind me, and I was like. Wow, that doesn't happen in cinema anymore. <laughs> I thought the scene with uh, Nandini, actually, I think I'm probably saying this wrong. She is pretending to be Nandini, but I believe her character name is Selijah. Yes. Because, yeah, she was uh, Vera Red I Please correct me. Vera Reddy's daughter, right? Correct. Okay. The part where she got the trident out of nowhere, <laughs> I thought that was just a little bit, just a little bit more because I, I wasn't expecting it. You know, I figured, okay, people are going to have weapons, but, you know, just. Also, the Trident was my favorite weapon, I think. Next I like to it. the firework gun. Yeah. I, I like, like the that. Gun. The firework shotgun is amazing. Of, yeah. But, of course. Yes. Maggie just becomes a complete badass after sleep while we sleepwalking through the whole film. She's been training <laughs> for that moment for her whole life. Exactly. It's, it's that hand-eye it. coordination. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and very well uh, choreographed. I mean, for, for anybody that's not 
watched an Indian film before. Uh, I should also say, because I've already recommended this to few people and the question i got the most was like well is it all just singing and dancing and i'm like no there's there's just a couple musical (laughs) moments it's really not what you have in your head as an indian film and uh that that finale was as rousing as any recent hollywood film i've seen uh more so i think um I I absolutely loved it. I, I I think it it builds. Then there's the you know somewhat of a tone shift, but you genuinely care about the characters, no matter how goofy it gets. You are connected to them, and I think that's what makes it really special. Uh, and even though Mario is definitely the lead character, I think everybody gets a moment, which which is which is really cool. Everybody kind of has yeah. their little moment. Uh, I, I, the only thing. Uh, a little bit too much slow mo in some shots. I thought that was a little overused. It, it, it was effective and I enjoyed it, but it was a little. But I did like how they alternated between the Benny Hill speed up for com- like when he climbs the tree. It, it was for comedic purposes, and then it was the slow mo for the action. To, to but it was like a list a little too much. Maybe that's because it's overused in modern films overall. Just a little too much slow mo, but uh, the bullet time or whatever you want to call it, uh, it was a little much. But it didn't really take me out of it, and the, and the subtitles didn't bother me at all. I, I didn't have a problem, re- you know, having a nice read along adventure. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I just want to mention that um, it's. I like the fact that he's a game designer, right? And then I think that the whole movie kind of looks a little bit like a video game and reminds me a lot of like, you know, Left 4 Dead or those other, any other co-op game, you know, that you're out there playing or even a single player game that has that kind of element to it. It really reminded me a lot of that. That's why you totally got to see Scott Pilgrim, Mike, because it. I love that movie with all my soul. I mean, really, it, it is so... It's so cheeky and so colorful and so fun. I think you'll love it. I did want to talk about the treadmill because <laughs> the treadmill seems like a, just a dumb gag, but it actually changes the movie. If you don't notice, all the zombies walk slowly and shamble like Romero zombies until they put it on the treadmill and he mm-hmm. increases the speed. After he does that, they all run. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like, affecting one zombie affects them all. Yes. And oh, it's like such you a have a hive mind. Di- so this is a subtle background thing, but it's it's just those little touches that, again, I don't know if that kind of detail is common in American cinema anymore. I don't think a lot of people would pick up on that. Uh, as far as the hive mind goes, you know, apparently that didn't work because Elijah was the first one that got cured of the of the zombification, which is worth talking about in and of itself. But then Mario has to go and have all the zombies chase him and get them all into the water. So, and then we also see fucking Vera Reddy's father at the very end anyway, and he's still zombified because that way he can walk and he won't be bedridden. <laughs> Which is like, think- that's a smart idea. And, you know, you just put the collar around him. It's fine. That was kind of a callback to Shaun of the Dead where he keeps his friend in the shed to yeah. play video games with. Yeah. But, yeah, it was like, well, you, you left him like that? Well, <laughs> you can lay in bed and be pathetic and do nothing, or you can walk around and be active. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, strange sense of humor, but I appreciated it because I have a very strange sense of humor. <laughs> so, so the film ultimately for me was about forgiveness. Um, as the background, everyone has someone who they're holding a grudge against at some level in the film, mm-hmm. and the, they only at the end like redeem themselves and and kind of forgive bought through forgiving everyone else. And it's interesting because the temple is a Shiva temple, which um, in the three gods of of you know hinduism uh she was the god of destruction but it's it's not meant as like a global apocalypse destruction it's meant as a very personal thing it's so it's like basically that healing water is like just that moment of forgiveness where everyone lets the past go and i think it's a really cool thing that the whole movie right from the very beginning of the film there's elements uh, in every in screen to develop that. But as you go through, it gets more and more prominent. And I love the fact that even like the designs on the illustrations on vans have meaning. It's, it's, it's funny because it feels like a very surface level movie, but it's really dense with information. 
Well, it starts out with the bird being hit with the uh, lightning, right. and he goes into the water and then flies out, and you're like, that seems totally random. Yeah. But you have to wait till the end of the flick to actually understand the payoff. Which, which I thought was pretty cool. I was like, oh, I get that. Yeah, it, the film to me was about uh, family, forgiveness, uh, faith, whether it's in yourself or other people, or your community or, or religion or whatever faith you may have. Because uh, basically he dunks everybody in holy water or the religious water of their religion. And that, you know, resets everything. And uh, we end up with a positive ending. So I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of liked it. it. Was very different. And uh, I, I can't say the film had like a, a, a negative attitude toward science. But I did pick up on a couple of digs here and there that maybe, you know, that wasn't exactly what they were going. You know, I don't know. It was just. It was weird. Like I've, I've never watched too many films like this, so I don't really know the culture enough to be able to speak for what they were trying to go for. I'm just trying to interpret it, having never been exposed to that before. But the doctor, you know, proclaiming that he wants to be a God, G O D, you know, it kind of <laughs> reminded me of like, are they trying to say that scientists maybe think they're a little too self-important or, or that science is becoming a religion you know, type of thing. Right you know what I mean? And and I'm thinking, wow, that, that is quite uh, appropriate for modern times because so, you hear a lot of people on TV, you know, believe in science, trust the science. And then you so wait, see wait this minute, movie. We're, we're denying science now? <laughs> we're denying science. I'm just making a observation of what I saw in the film and what the filmmakers could have possibly been trying to say. We're, we're going against World Health Organization guidelines and we're denying science. This video will remain on YouTube for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right! I, I think... Leave out any references... Anytime anybody says no, we're, we're we're gonna actually amplify that point of the video because 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 the whole thing is as we the second time we upload it, people will jump on it then. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm I, just observing what I saw and just reporting. Observe and report. That's all I'm doing. Well, just look at the I, lyrics of "Go Corona Go." I think exactly. it's pretty evident mm -hmm. that it's, yeah. it's anti-science, at least some regard. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's anti-authoritarian science. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I think that's the issue, and I think there's something serious to be said about that. I, whether where, wherever you come down on the issue, we were fed a lot of bad information at different points by different people from a wide spectrum of places in the early days yeah. because no one knew anything. But there was a sense of authoritarian communication coming down. I think the movie right from the beginning with that, you know, appearance by real Prime Minister Modi on on that television set kind of is already like attacking that and kind of saying you got to find your you got to find what makes sense to you. You got to live it within your conscience, mm -hmm. which I think is what that whole forgiveness thing is. Like the, the only reason Mario goes on this entire adventure is to show up his dad, to show his dad that he's that his dad's wrong, right? So yeah, he's his way of life actually is valid, right? But he's holding it against his dad that his dad can't see from his point of view. Whether his dad is right or wrong is almost irrelevant to the plot. It's just that he's single minded. I mean, he's willing to destroy his best friend's wedding <laughs> to prove his dad wrong, right? He never bothers to, he doesn't even feel the urge to congratulate his best friend on getting engaged and married until it's pointed out to him because he's yeah, so he single-minded. He sees it as a inconvenience to his uh, mission. Right. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, you're going to get married. What about the bug? Fix the bug first, you know? <laughs> That's why I was talking about his character arc and how he learns about other things being as important, if somewhat not more important than what his myopic view was. And then I think that helps him understand his father. And there's a whole resolution there that really brings it together and ties it up nicely at the end. Yeah, a lot of it is just, I mean, letting go of petty grudges because we're all facing this huge global hell that's coming down on us. And uh yeah, I, I mean, I, 
I, that's something that I think could connect with just about anybody. I mean, <laughs> I think a lot of people right now need to let go of certain things and get on fixing the world because, you know, yeah. we're all yeah, going to yeah. be screwed. We're and that all starts, out. like the film like says, it all starts with you adjusting your own point of view. It all starts mm -hmm. with you fixing yourself mm -hmm. before the, you know, because I'm going to fix the world. Well, that's an impossible impo task, but you can fix yourself. And if everybody concentrates on fixing themselves, that will eventually make the situation better. Uh, I thought that getting, was great. Getting back onto the science, I wanted to ask if anybody noticed the, so essentially this failed vaccine is responsible for the zombie outbreak. But uh, the zombies also, you know, we've, uh, has ever, anybody heard about the, the zombie deer and the zombie elk? They, they have chronic wasting disease. It's a prion disease. Yeah. I've heard about the zombie deer. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just, you know, obvious, you know, I'm, I have a, I have an irrational fear of getting a prion disease because it's just like out of nowhere. So I was thinking, Oh God, did that failed vaccine cause a prion disease? And that's why <laughs> zombies. Yeah. This is not going to stay up on YouTube more than five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> we're always getting memes about Pfizer zombies, and I'm like, stop mm. it, guys. A blood clot here, a Pfizer zombie inv invasion there. It's, it's awesome. That's what I meant about the film, you know, having a braveness to, us, to it that American cinema used to have. We yeah. used to be able to have these kind of commentaries and say these kind of things and bring up these questions and, and produce these stories to make you think about stuff. But then now, now there's such a habit of shutting that stuff down that it, it, I think it's really unhealthy. You know, we need to be able to have these conversations and poke a little fun at things because humor does make things a little easier to take. If we can point it like the friend that's a hypochondriac is actually the one, the first one to become a zombie <laughs> that, that starts the whole, chain of chain of reaction he goes to the and it, it, i thought that was great he's the one guy that's always he's got to wear the mask and he's always taking pills and he's always you know he's he's the most careful of all of them and they're making fun of him for being that way and yet he's the one that caused basically spreads the whole thing and so that wasn't yeah, lost on me that was too much and i think the use of comedy is appropriate because i remember how much we get annoyed at something like the black christmas re -re remake right now, if they'd taken that same concept and just applied humor to it, the message would not have been off offensively overwrought, right? So yeah. this manages to to kind of sneak in its messages through the humor and keep the tone at a point where we're accepting of the movie or even rooting for the film. But I really want to know, Christian, was that your favorite uh, cricket match on film ever? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can imagine you watching it because that sequence is so absurd and wonderful. And it lets us know that none of the characters should be believed because they're all liars. But right. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, quite honestly, when I was watching, I was more surprised at anything. I was like, God, I can't believe Lauren really likes this. I didn't think you liked to laugh. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, we're, we're all convinced that you think yeah. you were born without the ability to have a sense of humor. I have yeah. a sense of humor. It's just a very specific sense of humor. <laughs> I like I like smart humor, um, and this is a crazy sort of film because it's hiding its smart humor inside dumb humor. Um, and we used to do that, like the Kids in the Hall movie, which I love, did that. Um, but it's a rare breed now, so you don't hand me like you know. A hangover movie. I won't. I won't be able to deal with it. And I'll just. I won't. I won't make it. I promise you. Um, but even if you look back at like Porky's, that movie had things to say inside its humor. So it's like, that's the kind of comedy that I'd be more likely to go towards. I just mm -hmm. hope they do an American remake of this with oh, like Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> oh no, and, um, <laughs> Jack Black. Um, maybe Jim Carrey is one of the fathers. Oh, fuck uh, you. I'll we'll see Zach Efron. Um, <laughs> Zach, of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, God. No, please, I, I just, no. You are harsh on the buzz, Piz. Parts of me died that I didn't know existed when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a guy who's gone through some shit recently, and that hurt. Oh. You just don't understand the complexities of, uh, you know, Amy Schumer's humor. She'd be in there in a huge role. Huge role. Oh my God, she'd she'd be the Maggie role. You, you bet uh, your ass. 
Right. Bradley yeah, Cooper but, could be Mario. But she'd have a quip after she shoots the gun every time. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk oh, about geez. a movie I couldn't make it through. I'm only going to watch it if Steven Seagal's in it. <laughs> oh, you know, he's going to show up in there somewhere. <laughs> he could be the no-armed guy. Oh. <laughs> that would be fine with me. This movie's <laughs> writing <laughs> itself. Hold on. Let me get these ideas down. <laughs> <I'm telling you. laughs> this is a million-dollar idea here. Just don't have him run, and you're good. Oh, <laughs> Steven Seagal does not run. <laughs> what causes the zombie outbreak is Steven Seagal's power drink. His energy his, drink. Uh, his Asian experience oh. or is it cherry charge? <laughs> oh. I would have turned a long time ago because that was actually really good. I got him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, guys, uh, let's just go around and give our final thoughts on, like, uh, where this film opportunities for a larger audience exist. And now, now, I know, Piz, we'll start with you because you didn't like the film. But um, is there anything that you think is positive about the film for a Western audience to... Yeah, I did. I, yeah, I did like the last half of the movie when it got very actiony. I did like it, and the jokes landed. I, I liked the guy who climbed the tree. <laughs> uh, I think he was my favorite character in the movie. Um, so I, I did. I did like that part of it. Uh, the last, the last half hour of it. I just, I don't know. The, the humor didn't work for me. I didn't really care about the characters. Maybe it was just I was in a mood. I don't know. Um, but I, I, I don't know. It didn't. It just didn't work for me the way that's working for you guys. It's like you. It's like we're speaking. You're speaking the, the one language. I'm speaking the other. But we're both readies. We're all readies here. <laughs> but it's two different languages. So I mean, I don't know. I, I'm glad that you all liked it. I, I think there'll be. I think some people will like it. Sure. Um, and and I think there'll be a lot of people who. Well, there's a lot of people who are going to be turned off by it because they've got to read. There's going to be a lot of people who are turned off by it simply because it's. You know, it is a little slow in the first hour, um, but um, I don't know. I, I think it will find an audience. Maybe not a huge audience, but it'll find an audience. All right, Mike. Oh man, I, I don't really want them to change anything with this direction of film. I want to see more. Maybe refine it a little bit. You know, uh, tighten it up a little bit, get the pacing a little better, maybe not as much of the bullet time, you know, though, not stop relying on some of those, maybe the editing, I don't know, the editing didn't really bother me, but I could see how it could be kind of choppy, because that's what one reason I hated Gladiator was just like, you can't focus on anything during a fight scene, but I thought this was handled well, better anyway. Uh, now, you know, the, you know, the, the hard part's going to be subject matter and what modern American audiences will tolerate as far as, you know, story goes. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, everything I liked about it, I think mo most modern audiences wouldn't like about yeah. it. Uh, would, would the diversity people, I mean, you know what I mean? To, to, to us, it just looks like, you know what I mean? But the, to them, everybody, you know, they, like you said, they've got all these different complexities within their, but we can't really see that because we don't understand that. Right. Well, I didn't want, I didn't want to bring that up. Uh, but now that, because I didn't want to be called a racist, but now that Mike yeah. has brought it up, so he'll be called a racist. Yes. There will be people <laughs> who are not interested in this movie because the people on the screen don't look exactly like them. Yeah. yeah and, and that is like the, the, you know, the elephant in the room, but somebody has got to say it. So fuck it. I'll be the sacrificial lamb. Uh, that does that stuff doesn't bother me. It's a movie from India. I expect to see people from India in the movie. Uh, you know what I mean? Right. That that's just kind of how it goes. You know what I mean? Uh, whatever. Any, uh, any, but anyone who doesn't want to look at Maggie has a problem. I agree. India. Or, or the assassin chick. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I liked I liked the woman with the uh, trident better than her. Yeah. Or was she that Maggie? Was that was a, Maggie was no, the no, girl no, with no, the no. video the video game. You like yeah, Nandini yeah. more? Yes, I liked her. Yeah. Oh, me I. Too. I'm with you, but man, that fight scene kind of changes my mind. I, I go over the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie. Um, I, I don't have, I actually really, really liked it a lot. So I'm going to be recommending it to anybody who likes colorful and fun movies. I didn't take it so serious. You know, I, um, I kind of watched it with an idea that it was going to be fun. 
and uh, it, it certainly was fun for me. Um, the, that's maybe that's why the pacing didn't seem to bother me because I wasn't really, I wasn't looking for anything specific. I was, I was just, I was, to me, it just seemed so fun. And I liked the conversations and the uh, interactions between the characters. So I, I really wasn't bored at all. So I'm going to give it a, you know, five and say, go for it. Awesome. Christian. Uh, you know, I hear you guys talk and a lot of y'all can break down this and that about the movies. I'm a little jealous. I just, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. I just laughed at the movie. I laughed really hard. I thought the comedy was the, my favorite part of it. The zombie stuff and the fights were obviously great, you know, but it's hard to say who to recommend this movie to because you don't know until somebody watches it. I mean, you really just have no idea. And I think it's found an audience. I mean, I go on YouTube and I look up clips, 55 million views on this, 17 million views on that. Well, I mean, it's got an audience. For you know how many Indians there are out there? This, well, this that, well, that's that's it's an audience. Thanks for taking yeah. the heat off me, Jay. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> the the thing is, this was a very big release in India. The problem is yep. getting the exported world to care. Stone. Well, I found it a very unique and interesting stew of different tones of uh, different. Uh, characters and genres and references. It was just a, a giant stew of different elements. And I liked most of it. I mean, maybe a couple flavors here and there I didn't get or understand or it didn't go down well. I had a blast watching this. I mean, especially with the music. I'll probably add the music to my playlists now. I thought it was so much fun. Um yeah, I like. I, I, this was a genuine, genuine surprise for me. I mean, uh, um, just real quick, I remember Lauren. You, I remember you uh, sent me a movie that you really championed called Game Over, um, which I do intend to see that again too. Even though I thought the first half half was terrific, and for some reason, the second half kind of lost me. But this one was consistent all the way through. A blast from start to finish. Awesome. Jay, uh, I'm gonna kind of reiterate what what Mike said. Um, it's I don't think this is any kind of mainstream audience. Definitely not an American audience. Um, unfortunately, it's just got too many things against it. All the stuff that we like about it, like like I love the fact that it's you know not in America. Like I get to learn about their culture and stuff as I watch this movie. That's one of the things I enjoyed the most about it. But. Uh, Unfortunately, I just don't think American audiences can, can handle stuff like this. I mean, it's got subtitles, pacing, you know, they're they're not white characters. So, I mean, it's got so many different things going against it for, you know, being any kind of mainstream success, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, I got to say one part I really enjoyed a lot, I finally noticed, was uh, the, the playing of um, the Indian thriller. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, what's his name? Kalyan Kal is getting ready for his uh, his honeymoon night with his <laughs> zombie bride. <laughs> pretty, pretty great. That's a that's a staple in my household. I rock that jam all the time. <laughs> and then, of course, it appears on the jacket at the end, so it all works. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You're so inclusive, Jay. <laughs> uh, Dan. Well, highest recommendation, obviously. I love this film, start to finish. Uh, I do believe it has potential. We, uh, America may not quite be there yet, but I think within the next decade, I think there'll be more of a, a, a comfort level and understanding of uh, Indian culture and, and cinema. I hate to put a number on it, but I, I think we'll slowly start getting there. Um, you know, White Tigers, uh, a big one for the Oscars this year. Uh, certainly learned a lot about the culture through that film. Um, but no, I absolutely love it. If, if you like to see something that you haven't seen time and time again, because just the culture itself adds a whole unique feel to it, check it out and, and give it a shot. Um, <clears throat> not everybody's going to like it. I, I can imagine I, I have some friends that are going to have similar issues that we've talked about here tonight, but, uh, but I, I love it personally. What can I say? Awesome. man, Sam, 
Well, before I get into my final thoughts, Stone, has anybody ever told you you look just like Diamond Dallas Page? <laughs> I'm not the only one. <laughs> Stone is the absolute Stone last person is. I would <laughs> ever guess looks like Diamond Dallas Page. <laughs> no one saw that coming on this channel. Nobody saw that coming at all. I have no clue who that is. <laughs> somebody, somebody wait, 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 hair for god's sakes he doesn't look like stone at all stone looks more like <laughs> abyss from tna or something what are you talking oh about God. <laughs> Damn, that, that was that was in, that was an insult dude. no abyss is badass what are y'all talking oh, about he doesn't diamond look Dallas page <laughs> lorne looks more like diamond Dallas you look page exactly than stone. like yokozuna what the fuck is happening here <laughs> Well, Christian, you did. I, I, I love when, when when you piss off Christian, he gets more Louisiana. <laughs> Diamond Dallas Page. <laughs> Christian, say yesterday. Yesterday. Nice. Yesterday. All right. I want to make my husband does All something. All my so troubles hard. are far. Oh. Okay. Sing, baby, sing. I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, well, well, this I'll is badass. It. I'm just saying. He has black <laughs> hair, for God's sake. But he's a disfigured guy in a mask. I don't he's know. He's not disfigured. It's, it's, he's a wrestler. He's, well, he's dude. He's a wrestler. The, Im fake. the implication oh, was for God that he sakes, was the implication. Not Joseph. <laughs> dude, Joseph God damn Mark. Mark. I'm not saying even, you're disfigured. This stuff. Is funnier if you have I no didn't idea say that. anything wrestling. <laughs> I didn't expect Abyss to come off tonight. This is no, awesome. no. I didn't expect a <laughs> while talking about this movie. I didn't expect a Diamond <laughs> Dallas Page or Abyss reference to pop <laughs> off. But. This is why Sam is important to this channel. Never, never know. I feel there's a crossover between horror and wrestling because wrestling fans complain about everything and horror fans complain about everything. That, that is very true. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, all right, now I'll be serious, serious as I can be. So I think this is actually going to have a big crossover appeal with the fucking weeaboos, because <laughs> do I have to explain what that is? You probably, yeah, go ahead. Pretend okay. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is, generally. Okay. All right, it's basically a very cringy version of an anime fan. We used to call them otaku when I was in high school, way back in the day, but now they're weebs. And I seriously am not really sure where that term originated from. Otaku is just because you would sit in your house all the time. And I believe otaku is another word for house. If my Japanese is still correct. So I think there's going to be a lot of crossover appeal there. Because anime nerds are used to, watch, are used to reading subtitles all the time. Although these subtitles did give me a workout. Uh, mostly because they were moving a little bit faster than I'm used to. Uh, but there's, I, I think this is going to hit younger audiences right in that demographic. Also, because if you're a nerd, then you probably will recognize all the video game references in there, mm -hmm. like the Assassin's Creed on the laptop and the Pac-Man tattoo, the Pac-Man behind Mario. Uh, it's, well, his name is Mario. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is a, yeah. I mean, true. I wish I could shorten my name to something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, I did it, Sam. You did it. Right. <laughs> Never mind. Play it so, again. So yeah, it's gonna hit that demographic no problem. I think it's where it might it's gonna lose some people, you know, not just on the lost in translation issues, but then you know, some asshole is gonna be like, "Why is there a swastika in the background of that final scene?" <laughs> oh wow! And then. Every, and yeah, and then somebody's gonna be like, "That's racist," because they don't know how to Google everything. <laughs> Which, for those watching at home, that is not a swastika. It's the other way around. It's a yakumanji. That's what it is in Japanese. I don't know what it is in in Telugu, what it's called, but I think it's representative of joy and prosperity. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm glad I got that part right. <laughs> um, I don't. Sorry, go ahead. No, go, no, go ahead. I to add, though, there's also a very small niche audience that's going to like this movie because at the very end, we cure the zombie, we cure the zombie disease with a golden shower, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> with the water dripping on Elijah's face. Hmm. 
And I mean, it's coming from the Shiva Lingam stone that's sitting in that uh, cave in the temple. Well, sitting in the temple, excuse me. Uh, and a lot of people, I think there, there's, you know, there are some people that were will recognize that as a phallic symbol, but the Shiva Lingam stone is, you know, again, with my limited knowledge, it represents uh, totality. And uh, that was something that I also wanted to touch on because I thought that was a nice touch. It's sort of like a totality of everything. It's not just bringing together the two families through this ordeal, but it's also bringing together the themes of religion and science. But yeah, no, people are like, I'll, oh, they'll probably be down for that. All that in a golden shower metaphor, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I knew there was a golden reason showers, why I liked the golden last shower half hour of this movie. <laughs> You can always win Piz over and change his opinion as soon as you recognize the fetish. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> what was clever there is I meant fetish in both the uses of the word. <laughs> I have no uh, illusions that this film is going to become some huge mainstream Netflix success. Um, in fact, I, I think it would be important for it not to be that. But I do think it's a film that is well-deserving of a lot of attention and to be taken as a step in the right direction for a genre that unfortunately has has never really embraced the world stage yes italy in the late 70s yes japan in the early 2000s but these were really just a handful of films that were really part of the american lexicon or the american um, slew of acceptable popular titles and I, I really yearn for the day when it doesn't really matter where a film was made under what cultural references that we evaluate, we find ourselves wanting to go to new places to get new stories told in ways that perhaps aren't completely comfortable for us. Maybe are a little even baffling. I don't know if you've spent any time watching some of the, you know, really obscure, say, Indonesian films of the early 80s, but you're going to have some trouble with the cultural references. They're really mm -hmm. exotic. But that said, if you if you can embrace them, not just get past them, but embrace them, there's a whole world of cinema out there beyond watching Evil Dead 2 for the 42nd time. Am I okay <laughs> on the 41st time, though? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and we don't have to... That's the other thing. We don't have to stop loving all the stuff that we grew up with and is homegrown. I don't want this to seem like it's an anti pop horror thing. But the fact that you can't buy a Funko Pop of uh, Mario, although that would be a first day purchase for some people, I think, is a good thing. Horror has always been the like under, underdog genre. It's always been the place where the outcasts can find voices that make sense for them in a world that too often just doesn't make any fucking sense. This movie for the people who find it and embrace it, I think is an opportunity to open themselves up to more of the less Western Indian and Turkish and Indonesian and Malaysian, all those hot spots that are going on right now for the genre. I think this is this film because it has enough touchstone with the zombie thing. This film could be a great gate. This could be a great gateway to a, a really widened, field of film that you could uh, really really end up feeling like we're not stuck stuck in a blumhouse world so i want to thank all of you for coming on tonight this was a great discussion hopefully we did a little bit of good here and uh any final words from anyone just scream them out all at once as i throw up double horns and we get out of here watch the ground zombie ready USA. Do yourself a favor. Check it out. Don't be afraid. Feel the bang. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at Stone Gassman. Dude, Stone, that looks just like you, dude. <laughs> Especially the perm. That's that's, that's <laughs>